7.7 .7 billion dollars. That's the amount of liquidity that's currently trapped in the biggest lending protocol that we have in DeFi, Aave. It's stuck there, doing nothing but waiting to be either liquidated or to be returned. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Gavin Hasselbank. I'm CBDO at Delta Prime. Uh, if you do know who I am or you know who Delta Prime is, they know that we're a protocol of friendship, a protocol of partnerships. Uh, I have two of them on my shoulder, Yield Check and Trader Joe. But when we launched three to four months ago, we were launching with the best group of friends that one could possibly wish for. Everyone from a Yield Check, Trader Joe, GMX, Pangolin, Factor Finance, they're all there to celebrate the launch with us. And the reason that we consistently choose collaboration over competition, even though we realize that there's value in healthy competition and in showing the differences, is that we see that at the end of the day, we are all here for the exact same thing. Whether you're a builder or an institutional investor, whether you're a retail investor with $1,000 to your name, and whether you're here for personal gain or to see this space grow or to help this space grow, in order for any of that to happen, we need one thing first and one thing foremost. Adoption. Getting more users in, getting more liquidity in. But right now there's $7.7 .7 billion that's trapped in the biggest lending protocol, the biggest over collateralized lending protocol in DeFi. And that's not to say that over collateralization or over collateralized lending protocols never provided any value to DeFi or to Web3 as a whole, because quite frankly, they've been essential to get us to where we are today. They have been necessary. And what I want to do is I want to first walk you through it. Why are they here? Why did they amass such massive amounts of capital? Secondly, talk about a mindset shift that has been happening for the past one and a half, two years. A mindset shift that has just been discussed in a previous panel as well. And thirdly, talk about the Prime account, which is the best of both worlds. Which both worlds? Lending 1.0, trust-based, under-collateralized lending, and lending 2.0, over-collateralized lending. So let's start with the former, and I'm going to go through this quickly, because we all know it, right? How lending normally works in the traditional finance work, but we also have it in Web3, where you go to a bank, and you say, hey, I want to borrow $100,000. And the bank will tell you, that's fine, we got it sitting right here. Somewhere between 14 and 21 business days, and all we need from you is to know what your name is, and what you make, and what your wife makes, and what your dog makes, and like literally everything and everything to make sure that you are credit worthy, to make sure that they can trust you to pay your loan back. And that goes right nine times out of 10. Hell, it goes right 99 out of 100 times. But it's that one time that Genesis lends their money out to this organization, who lends it out to that organization. And they lend it out to three hours capital, for example, right? And they blow it all with 500x leverage on some exchange and defaults on the previous organization, the previous defaults on something else. And before you know it, the whole ecosystem is down. That's how over collateralization came to be. There were protocols, starting protocols, being like, we can evolve this, we can make this trustless. Because quite frankly, this is what happened in 2022. And under collateralization got a bad rep. But the problem wasn't under collateralization. The problem was the fact that we were all trusting one another to pay our loans back. So you got an Aave and a Compound and a MakerDAO and they started creating smart contracts. And as long as the value in these smart contracts is worth more than the value that they would lend out, you can always liquidate it, right? And you get it trustless. You don't have to trust one another anymore to make sure that the loan gets paid back. You enforce it. And that was, that was amazing. But that also means that as a borrower, if you now go to that same bank, right, and you can prepare this time, so you say, hey, uh, this is who I am, this is what I make, they'll now tell you, we don't need any of that anymore. We've evolved from trust-based lending to trustless lending. All we need from you to borrow this $100,000, and you can take it with you right away, all we need from you is to lend us $150,000. We are all here for one thing first and one thing foremost, to get adoption to happen. Now, pref preferably mass adoption, but let's start at adoption. Getting more users in, getting more liquidity in. In order to get that to happen, we need to make the space intuitive. It needs to make sense. Being forced to lend out $150,000 in order to borrow $100,000 does not make sense. 
Moreover, it completely crushes the capital efficiency of the borrower because they end up with less money than they started with. From a depositor perspective, usually how do fair market rates come to be, right? Including interest rates, supply and demand. If the supply increases, the interest rate goes down. If the demand increases, the interest rate goes up. If everyone is forced to be a lender first and foremost, what you're essentially doing is you're arbitrarily lowering the demand side. So you end up with 1% deposit rate for AVEX or 1.5% for USDC because it's a bull market or 0.08% for BTC.B. Amazing asset, I kid you not, right now, 0.08%. Those are not fair market rates. Those are the rates that you get as soon as you diminish that, uh, the demand side of the equation, as you get rid of that. And moreover, you end up with a lending protocol that one day looks at its pools and says, hey, I have $7.7 .7 billion, let's say it's in one pool, and I can't get rid of it, right? Even if they want to, if they have enough liquidity to lend out, the smart contracts prohibits them for actually lending out their money. And so a depositor comes, provides liquidity to the pool. A the borrower comes, someone who wants to borrow, provides liquidity into the pool. And they hoard and they hoard and they hoard liquidity. And that's why they consistently top the TVL rankings. And this is something that would have worked back in 2021, part of 2022. But the times were different then. People saw it differently. We had protocols like an Olympus DAO and a Wonderland and a Tao DAO, that, that was mine. Um, and what they all had in common is that they all gave you about a gazillion percent APY, right? We just spoke a little bit about it in one of the previous panels. They gave you a gazillion percent APY. So if you come in as a retail user with, with a thousand bucks to your name, and you've just learned what APY means, that means that it automatically compounds, right? So um, I put a thousand bucks in, it compounds every six, six hours. That means that I'll be a crypto millionaire by approximately tomorrow. That's not what happened. What did happen was that a bunch of people got wrecked. And a part of them, they, they just exited, right? Never to return until heavy regulation is coming in. And then there's a part that learned a very valuable lesson to ask the right question. And the right question indeed is not what gives me the highest APY. It's not what has the highest TVL. Because also an anchor you could, you could add to this list, right? The huge TVL, too big to fill, and then it filled. Those are not the right questions to ask. The right question to ask is where's my money coming from? What's my money being used for, right? Is it, is it real yield that became a term all of a sudden? Or is it all just the big money printer printing magic internet money, right? And as users adapted in their mindset, you also saw protocols adapt to that. And before you know it, you have protocols like a platypus coming up, who are looking at their USDC, USDT pool of $100 million and are saying, sure, we can increase the, this to $150 million. But what we can also do is start using the 90% of liquidity that's currently not being used, capital efficiency using the money that's already there. You have protocols like Uniswap, going to Uniswap V3, right? Concentrated liquidity, same thing, using the money that's already there. Uh, Trader Joe, liquidity book, exactly the same thing. Capital efficiency, using the money that's already there. And we saw it in their tweets as well, where all of a sudden they went, talking about Trader Joe here, all of a sudden from we're the biggest, we're the baddest, deepest liquidity pools, to look how small this pool is that we have right here. If you're active on crypto Twitter, you must have seen tweets like this. We only have $200,000 in this pool, but in the past 24 hours, it did $400,000 worth of volume. Now that's capital efficiency, right? And we see these changes. We see it with DEXs and we see it in AMMs. You see it with liquid staking derivatives all of a sudden taking, taking over, right? It's all, it's all focused on capital efficiency, but there's this one sector that's crucial to any financial system, lending, and that's still this archaic system of hoarding, hoarding, hoarding money instead of actually using the money that's already there. So we need something new, we need something better, we need something capital efficient. And that's where the prime account comes in, which is the best of both worlds. So the best of lending 1.0, right? The best of under collateralization. And if you have been to any AMA that we've ever held, then you know this example, you can come to Delta Prime, you deposit 100,000 bucks, $100,000. You borrow $400,000 and you can use the full $500,000.
you can explain to your grandma why you would want to do this. Right? This, this is intuitive why you would want to do this. On top of that, from a depositor perspective, all of a sudden you get fair rates back up again. Right? Because we bring demand back to the equation. So, surprise, surprise, 1.5% for USDC is not the fair market rate. It's somewhere between 10 and 15%. Because ever since we launched, and I know that's not the 100 percent, the thousand percent that we are used to like during 2021. But that's a fair market rate. That's what you get when you have supply and demand. On BTC.B, by the way, uh, it's not 0.08 percent. It's somewhere between 4 and 4.5 percent. That's the fair market rate. Now, if we would stop here, we would have the exact same problem that you have in trust-based uncollateralized loans, right? But we also take the best of lending 2.0. So this $500,000 that you now have in your prime account, its value is constantly being tracked wherever it goes. It can go to, through a yield check to a Trader Joe. It can go through a vector finance through to, uh, uh, to, to Pangolin or to, to Platypus. Right? We're bringing the money back to the protocols that actually matter, that are actually bringing value into this ecosystem. And no longer are we just hoarding Hoarding, hoarding. Now on top of that, Delta Prime benefits from this as well because similar to other protocols that are focused on capital efficiency, um, we too see that if we were to get fees in, and we, we try not to do it because we're focused on growth right now, but if we were to get fees in, we did it for a short amount of time shortly after launch, um, only on the USDC pool, 10% spread, mark, just the market rate, right, in lending protocols. We're making a thousand dollars a day, pure revenue for Delta Prime. Now, that's that's one pool. Right now, we have AVEX, uh, BTC, ETH. We have uh, USDT. Right. Soon, we will have transaction costs, and we'll have Prime brokerage services. And it sounds like it's going to be expensive, and it will be. But here's the thing: through this capital efficiency, as a borrower, you'll gladly pay for it. Because what you get out of it is worth way more than you are paying for it, right? We're using the money that's, that's right there. So if borrowers benefiting from this, the depositors benefiting from this, Delta Prime they're benefiting from this, but there's one last major player benefiting from this. Because at the end of the day, we're all here for the exact same thing. To get adoption to happen, and preferably mass adoption, but first adoption getting more users in, getting more liquidity in, so that we can deepen pool liquidity on the chain, lower slippage, and boost innovation. Right now, on Avalanche, over a third of the liquidity that we have on the C-chain is stuck in the biggest lending protocol on the chain. It's doing nothing right now. And our mission is to unlock this liquidity and do exactly what I just said. Deepen pool liquidity, move it to the protocols that bring a benefit to this chain, lower the slippage, boost innovation, and get the one thing that we are all here for. Adoption, and eventually, mass adoption. Let's unlock the blockchain. I see I have two minutes left, so can we do questions? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a tailored question. Which, uh, what are we using to make trades happen on Delta Prime? Uh, and that's a good question because initially we had only integrated decentralized exchanges directly. Uh, and we saw that, especially with a, a leveraged position, because that's what you end up with, you have very high slippage, right? So we then chose to take an aggregator, one of the best aggregators around, which is Yuxwap. The, uh, that's what you were going for. Oh, yeah, no, okay, yeah, no, they asked. Yeah, no, it is a good question, because there are, like sim there are products. We, we are popping up, right? This is not just us. There are other protocols 
like us who are popping up at the same time because this is a change that's going to happen, right? Like I said, this happens on AMMs, this happens in liquid staking derivatives. You, see it, you will see it in more panels and you will see it in more uh, keynotes as well. Capital efficiency is going to be the thing. And I know that some of the others, like they don't do that. They indeed use just an exchange. You need to use an aggregator if you're going to, pro if you're going to create a protocol like this. Thank you very much. Thanks. Do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, could you talk a little bit as to why, um, you know, there's still like all this liquidity locked on like Aave or maybe Compound just with like low rates, um, given that, you know, Delta Prime exists now and some of these other under, -collateral under collateralized lending platforms? Definitely. So why are people still using Aave, even though uh, Delta Prime is now providing a better way of lending and borrowing? I think a lot has to do with what I spoke about, like in the middle part, or at the start maybe, uh, that under collateralization, especially in 2022, got a bad reputation, right? And people got fearful of it. Um, and up till now, under collateralization mean, meant trust-based. Right, so that, that connection, that, that disconnect between the two, that they actually can be different, that from a user perspective, it can be under collateralized, and from a protocol perspective, it can be over collateralized. That, that's, that's something that still needs to happen, and that's just gonna take time. And that means that we have to be focused on security with Delta Prime, with preventing any exploits, so that's our main focus as well. And you'll see just from keeping this 10 to 15% on USDC, it, it, especially bigger players, it's not so much about the high APY, but also just, better portfolio managers, right? It's not so much about the high APY, it's about is it safe and will I be able to withdraw my money when I need it? Um, we need deep pool liquidity for that and we need to create trust. And for trust, you also need just time, right? So yes, we have shut up from uh, non-existence to number 11 right now on Avalanche, which is relatively fast. Um, but as we go on in time without any exploits happening, without any of that happening, uh, you'll see that indeed we will take over eventually the over collateralized lending protocols. Cool. Well, I think we're on lunch break. I, maybe one more question. Does anybody have a question? Last questions? If you have a question, yeah. I have a microphone for you. See one last question oh, yeah. here. Hello. When you manage liquidations, you know, for the Delta Prime, could you further explain how it works, the process? Uh, because I realize you have to supply um, some assets, then you can leverage up to four or five X. Yeah. Um, how do you manage the liquidation? Is it based only on the supply or on the, you also take into account the, um, the, the money you already borrowed that you are getting used. Right, in you mean the, like, is it the just the collateral market. that you provide or is it also what you borrow, we, essentially, we, right? Yeah, it's like, it's the, sorry, English is not my no, native it's language. It's the sum of both, like, sum of both. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so how we, how we do liquidations, like uh, in this example that I just gave, you deposit 100K, you borrow 400K. Yeah. What we do is we create a new dedicated smart contract, put the 500K in that smart contract, and that 500K, it can be, you can trade with it, you can farm with it, you can, you can uh, create an LP token with it. Um, whatever you do with it, there, there are, by the way, there are restrictions. So we do confine it to partner protocols. Does not mean that there's anything on Aave that you can't do in Delta Prime. With a little bit of creativity, you can get the exact same outcome. But in the Prime account, indeed, there are some restrictions that you can do. And because of that, because the Prime account always has full control over all liquidity in your dedicated smart contract, it's, it's in its essence, it's the same as an overclarelized protocol, right? Because it's 500K covering a 400K loan. So, so there's, there's not really a difference, a difference from that perspective. It's just from a, user case, from a user perspective, it's completely different because you just brought 100K in and you now have 500K to, to use, right? From a protocol perspective, it's the same. Um, yeah, sorry. Sweet, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Delta Prime.